Hey D&D friends, welcome to another episode of Dave's Imagination, where today we're going to do another recap of our Thursday night game. Thursday, Thursday, January 27th, we had another regular game of Dungeons and Dragons. Dark Queen Ascension presents Adventures in Barovia. Ready for a recap? Stay with me. Okay, like I've done many times before, many last few weeks, I've gone back through our live play and I've added chapters. I've added chapters. You can, YouTube makes it very simple. YouTube makes it very simple. Down in the description, I just type in a little description. I pick, put a timestamp and hit save. And now I can go and I can click on that timestamp and it takes me right to that timestamp inside the video. So it works fantastic. And that's what I've been doing. And so after our game on the next day or soon after the game, I'll go back through that game and I'll go through and pick out the different things when we start different topics. And then I'll put the timestamp. And that's what I've done in the description below. So uh, description below of the replay. You don't need it for this. This recap short or should be short, right? So let's flip over. Let's flip over to our YouTube session. Here we are, we're two minutes in. And if I slide down here, oh, another thing you might notice is I've moved my picture from the lower left-hand corner to the upper right-hand corner. Why? Because the description is in the lower left-hand corner. And now if with my picture up there, you can actually see our, what they call chapters? I'm calling them chapters. I think they're timestamps, right? So, uh, so the first timestamp here is Enter Strider now. Christian, I love you, man. I love how you get into this, and I love that you're invested in your character, and I love what you did. And so, for everyone, let's take a peek at Enter Strider. Don't worry. At the end of this video, we went full screen. We captured some pictures, and I'll put that in this vi in the recap video as well. So that he enters, he he's dressed in all green, and he's carrying this handmade homemade crafted staff 3d printed tips on it that he's fashioned to this this pole and uh kudos to you christian that's impressive and if i could give you multiple uh uh inspiration i would but uh you don't need it you got all the inspiration you need so that's great so that was the first time time stamp and we'll come back to that at the end of the game end of the recap uh we followed that on with the summary and, and this time i did a little more than just the normal summary i also added in i took the time in between sessions to go back through all the notes which again by our fantastic christian who creates the google doc that has all of our notes in it if you go to uh google and you add go to for me it's my wingdings i go to the google docs Go to the Google Docs and let's see, DQ Adventure, DQA, DQA, Dark Queen Ascension, uh, uh, Adventures in Barovia. Go ahead and open that guy up. And right here, yep, uh, we've got tw January 27th. All of his notes are right here. So players, if you ever want to go see details, you can go in here. You can even search on something and you'd find it. But he goes all of the, the recap of that session, quite detailed. Look at this. Look at this, it's fantastic. All these, he's got over two pages, almost two pages worth of text. Christian, you're the bomb. I love you, man. And so we go here and I open up my day by day breakdown. And I don't wanna read through this again, but you can see every day I list out what we did and I didn't get any pushback. So I assume I'm pretty close to being accurate. And the big thing here for me was what day is it? And we found that we are actually in day 10. Let's see if I can catch up. Day six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We are in day ten. Day ten, we got the mysterious gift, and Strider began his quest, and, and off he went. Strider began his quest, and the rest of the group was deliberating what they were gonna do. The rest of the group is delivering what they do. So then that brings us to after our day by day breakdown, we go conversation with Elver. So uh, as they are, as you guys are debating what you're gonna do. All right, as you guys were debating what you were gonna do, Elver, and you're struggling a little bit about deciding what you wanna do next. Uh, do, you, do you wanna go? Do you wanna go check out uh, uh, Ravenloft? That seems a little scary, and especially when you don't have Strider. Strider's off doing his personal quest and the group hopes that he can enlist 
he's successful and he can enlist the aid of local druids and wildlings and free them from their the the whatever hold that Strahd has over them and with his leadership maybe revolt against Strahd. So they're hopeful that's successful, but while that's happening, they're debating what to do. And um, so to help them along their way, I presented them an option. I brought in Elver and they asked him a couple questions. What did they ask him? They asked him, oh, why does Strahd not like the were ravens and basically it was because they had harbored uh refugees they they have they're the opposition they are the opposition and uh and the small the small opposition and strad's aware of them and he is sick of them and so they want to get rid of the were ravens so that's why they don't like them and they mentioned the mad mage and validated that there is a powerful mage that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with strad and that mad mage lives somewhere up in the mountains of the to the north the, and that was a re reveal that some people didn't realize there was mountains to the north absolutely brovies in, in a big big valley and that we've been to the mountains to the south but now we're telling them that there's a mad mage that lives in the mountains to the north we told him about that and then but he was telling he came in to tell them that maybe they want to strike back at at the werewolves oh also in the reveal also in the reveal was um that during the previous evening, the werewolves were the ones that came to the town and tracked them to Argon Volsalt and uh, led. They were followed by they were followed by a group of witches that did some sort of ritual, and eventually uh, they noticed Rahadin, uh, the the um, first mate, the first person, the second in command of, of Strahd brought and dropped off the gift at the doorstep of, of Argon Volsol. And, uh, and then I showed them that there's all these ravens in their front drive, in their front cul-de-sac. And, and that, that was very upsetting. And Elver said, um, I know where the werewolf's den is. And they convinced Elver to lead them to it. He said, well, I'll lead you most of the way. And um, to do that, though, to do that... So let's see here. That was Elver. That was the conversation with Elver. But before we get on more to to the, the the main group's quest to track down the werewolf, then we went back and checked in on Strider. And so we jumped to Strider's quest. And in Strider's quest, let's see here. In Strider's quest, we have. I didn't break it down very much. That's okay because there wasn't much to break down. Um, so we started with the pictures of, hey, here's your map. Here's your map to get up to the peak. And then I had some flavor picks. And what they say, this was the, the picture from Paramount, right? And I guess I, I can see that. So it's just to symbolize that this is a high peak up in the mountains that the the Strider as a giant eagles had just left had Jeff the, just left the wildlings at the Amber Temple and was flying north to, not north, was flying up to the peaks of, of the mountain with the familiar, with Noel's familiar following behind. And he went up there and he searched and he searched for an hour. And eventually, eventually he found the cave. He found the cave, but he couldn't find the giant goat. And it took an hour. And while he, he searched for, I don't know, hour, hour and a half for that goat, and he eventually went into the cave where I describe the cave as a, as this is the burial site, uh, tomb, tomb of the leaders of these Arctic druids, Arctic wildlings, and, and frozen in the walls of the cave are the, are these past leaders of this tribe and uh it opens up in 100 feet back it opens around to a big pool frozen ice pond and around that pond on the outside edge are these are these frozen former leaders and, and eventually though after he's done with that he's it's like well all the reason he was he came was to kill sangsler and and so he got the gumption to go out into out into the snow and make himself available to to Sangzor and 
Sangzor did come, and boy did he come. Sangzor came and he he walloped him good. He he hit him with a a, fr a fr cone of frozen breath and free froze uh, Strider solid, which uh, that was not until after Strider had cast a uh, flaming sphere on and, and put it right next to Sangzor, which Sangzor. Uh, took the damage and it, and the, those flames here they do some damage but not enough for things are to really be concerned about enough to move get him to move out of his space and, and so uh but as on sangzor's turn he froze he froze him solid and now noel brought up that uh the familiar was with him and so the familiar then attacked and, and distracted sangzor for a turn which and gave at which then Sangzar attacked the the familiar back and got rid of it. So they the the group back at, at uh, uh, the rest of the group doesn't have the ability to see see how Strider is doing now, and so uh, but that bought a turn for for Strider to try to break free of his ice, which he failed the first time. I, he even had advantage because he br I gave him the ability to to draw the flaming sphere to his feet. Put put the flame sphere between him and and Sangzor, which aided him in getting out of the ice. But it was still with with the with the um, advantage. He still wasn't able to break free uh, the first time. On but the second time, because the the familiar bottom turn, he was able to break free. But that was enough to break free of the ice, but not quick enough for. For to avoid a, a, a ram attack by the goat, which did some massive damage. So between the cold attack and the ram attack, he was he was Strider was in pain, and yet he was determined not to give up the fight. So he continued the battle and uh, chased him back toward the the mountain. I chased him. It wasn't far. It was just the 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 battle moved toward the cave the cave entrance. And uh, oh, here in the picture, I, I get. I showed him that hey, uh, in the picture, you were warned that you could be frozen solid, and that's what those lines were meaning, and they they picked up on that. And so, with that, uh, say uh, Strider did his attack, but chase straight chase Sangzer back on top of the cave's mouth, and Sangzer came down and with another ram attack, knocked Strider unconscious. And that's where we left Strider's quest for most of the night. And, and, and Christian, I feel a little bad because you sat there for about an hour, not engaged, not involved in the storyline. And you were a trooper. You stayed, to, stayed uh, uh, you kept your attention to the game and uh, took notes. Ah, just fantastic, man. And, and, and so as we went back to, Back to the rest of the group. So if we jump down here and we go back to Albert Lodge. So on the way to, on the way to, um, the group was heading toward finding the werewolf den, which they knew which was northwest of Lake Bertok. To get there, though, they would have to pass right by within a mile of, of the Albert Lodge. We allowed them to drop off some of their stuff. And before they headed to to the, find the werewolf den. And they said, instead of going directly to the werewolf den, they want to check out this tower, this tower that was on Lake Veritok. So as we move forward to the tower on Lake Veritok, or Rictavio's tower, all right, and, and here we have the tower. Okay, so they see there's a cart in front and uh, the tower, and as they approach the tower, they 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 heard voices inside the tower and when they tried to knock on the door it had some sort of force field over it and eventually they they called into the people in the tower and they answered and the, the, those people didn't really want to talk to him right right then i i gave them something about the, you could, they could overhear them saying something along the lines of um uh you have to leave it says the male voice, and then the female voice says, "No, my place is by your side. I won't leave you." And and, and so they, if they would have noticed, that's the that's kind of the short conversation they had. And, and they knocked on the door and they talked to him. And 
he wasn't very interested in them. He said they told him they were looking for the werewolves, and he said, oh, they're over there. Go, go find them. And he says, well, what do you know about where do you, they, they kept wanting his silver, silvered weapons. And it's like, no, those are my silver weapons. If you want silver weapons, you go into the locking, you go get your own and you better have silver to do it. And so, but you have magic, you should be fine. And so they bet him a do. Oh, and they said, then they, they said, hey, can you, can you tell us about vampires? And it's like, would you be quiet? Would you just ask me like vampires out and open like that? He says, fine, I'll tell you about vampires. You come back later. And so they have an appointment, I guess, with 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 uh, they have an appointment with Rictavio at like six p.m. at the tower. So hopefully they can dispatch dispatch the werewolves, and they can be back back to the tower by six p.m. And maybe he'll tell maybe Rictavio will say tell them what he knows about vampires and perhaps Strahd. Uh, so that was Rictavio's tower. They left there, and then they pursued. They pursue the werewolf den as we jump to the next thing in our list here. Werewolf den. And this is where they spent the last hour of the night as they encountered the werewolf den. And in this particular time, um, one of the failings of the maps that they provide you is everything's in green. Like, oh, it's summer and springtime. And, but don't they know it's Barovia? Everything's gray. And up here in the mountains, the werewolf dens up here in the mountains, and it's snow covered and cold. It's even described that way in the module, but yet they don't draw it that way. And so we find these flavor pictures by James RPG Art. It's a Patreon I joined so I could get some of his artwork. I think it's been been, been pretty fact, fantastic and added a lot of flavor to the game. So here's the, the art as we go into the werewolf den. And unlike previous encounters, they do a full-on rush. They don't go and sneak in. They don't go peek in, see what they can see, and try to draw people out and be tactful. No, they're going to go all in. And so that's exactly what they did. And when they did that, uh, they there was two guards standing right in the front of right in the front of the mouth, and the guards saw them, and they alerted the rest of the people, and that. That uh, brought in more, more uh, people to, to um, come in and fend for them. Now, so through the battle, they they did a, they cast a web, they cast a, uh, an, an illusion, and the first two people they turn into werewolves and they rush them, and, and uh, they eventually killed off both of those guys, and. As we move on, let's see here. Uh, oh, at a certain point during during the battle, oh, Katota, I love it. Katota does his wild magic, and at first, the first time he casts his wild magic, he levitates an I don't know inch off the ground, and so it's I feel like it's kind of like he's in outer space. He's just levitating up in space. And then later on in the battle, he does another wild magic spell and he, mushrooms sprout at his feet. And so he he says, hey, uh, can someone help me move up into battle? So Irina goes up and grabs him and throws him up toward the wall. And he floats Oh, the wall. He grabs onto the sconce at some point. So as we move on in the battle, if we jump forward here a couple times. We, yeah, we take care of the two werewolf guards, but that wasn't until after they, the guards had summoned, but uh, the, the wolves that, try, that tried to catch up with them uh, got caught up in, in Olak's web. So, and, and so that's kind of where we, we ended our night. Uh, they took care of a bunch of werewolves and they cut a bunch of dire wolves. They don't know what they are. They're dire wolves or wolves or some hybrid form. And, you know, at one point, uh, Ken asked if, if, Hey, are these werewolves or wolves or, and I said, you could ask them. And, uh, of course they don't know. So, but that is where we left them. They had just entered and cleared the first wave of wolves until, until so from somewhere within the cave, there's a whistle and, and uh, someone whistling for like dogs to come back, right? And they did, the ones that could, they turned around and they went back into the caves. And, and so that kind of gives an air of mystery of, okay, now what? Do they continue into the caves where they know there's wolves? You know, it's most certainly they're waiting for them. And uh, where will they be? And how will they approach them? 
um they are this group is a mighty powerful group of, of six war six adventures six one two three four five six seven adventures six right because the breakout is their double up six adventures and uh um they ought to be able to take care of them but will these werewolves use tactics to help even the odds and they are in the, they the adventures are in the werewolf's territory so you would think that they're Werewolves ought to have some amount of advantage. Now, finally, with that ended, we took that all the way up in the last five minutes. I saved the last five minutes to, to go back to Strider's Quest. Back to Strider's Quest as we go. And he wakes up. He wakes up in the he wakes up in the the cave. He's been pulled in there somehow, some way by a female and you know what i'll give you a picture of that female right here and and this female has pulled him in there somehow some way and has given him a good berry to revive him and and gives him a second good now he's up to two hit points and this this uh very attractive uh wild arctic wildling um helps him out and so what will strider do next he's in the cave and with this wildling and with the with the goat still sangzor still outside with his quest still largely looming it's been an it's been some amount of time we don't really know how much amount of time will he go right out there will he try to heal himself and go resume the battle or will he take time maybe he'll take a short rest so he can get his wild chase back but Will he take short rest to get some of his hit points back? Or will he try to heal himself? I guess we'll find out next. I'll say next week, but really, we the group decided to do uh, an ad hoc adventure. I love it. I love it that the group is so invested that they want to play more and more. That means they're liking it, and, and that makes me happy. And we're going to have an additional game on Sunday. We're not going to wait until next Thursday. We're going to come back on Sunday afternoon. We're going to play another session. So uh, we'll do that. Now, finally, uh, without further ado, let's get to the end of the video and let's see if we can have some more pictures of Strider and Costume. Here, he comes up to the camera. And I said, you know what? Oh, yeah, that's a picture, but we can do better than that. Here, yeah, we can draw, use the iMac camera. Oh, wait, come over here where I can see you better. Move the chairs out of the way. And let's just say right here, and we'll make that oh uh, yeah don't smile so give me a give me a face and he did and that's the night so it's a fun day fun night as we did most of the most of the venture it was a fun night as we uh did our game it's a they're always fun uh, i said they're always fun we we have a good time and uh i look forward to having an additional game at, at this point in the venture where i've read you know research most stuff um i'm prepared I did take additional time because I have to figure out exactly what what uh, Rictavio is going to tell him about Strahd. Mm. And, and so uh, we'll, we'll have that probably on Sunday as well as hopefully, hopefully we have some resolution to Strider's quest and we'll find out. So uh, probably be another one of these come uh, Monday or Tuesday, right? So we'll have our live session on Sunday, and then I'll probably, I hope, I hope to be able to do a recap of that session on Monday or Tuesday before we play again on Thursday. So uh, thanks for joining, and uh, take care.